Hello and welcome. We have uh, discussed about uh, profit loss account balance sheet. Now, we will be discussing about uh, the cash flow statement. Cash flow statement uh, is uh, we have already defined and it is uh, it actually summarizes a company's cash inflows and cash outflows and uh, it gives uh, the net cash flow during a certain period. And uh, cash flow statement actually categorizes uh, all the cash inflows and outflows into three different activities. One is operating activities, another is investment activities, and the third is financing activities. Operating activities, as the name suggests, it is the cash fl cash flow that is happening due to the operation of the main uh, core business. Whereas investment activities is uh, is uh, are related to uh, the investment uh, actions or transactions that the company is making, primarily making uh, procurement of uh, fixed asset, and secondary is investment. A company purchases machinery, they they purchase building, they purchase uh, transporter, etc., etc. The money that is invested in in those. And then a um, bit of money they invest in banks also in fixed deposit or for securing their loan or some kind of maybe bank guarantee or something. They are also part of investment activities. Third is financing activities. Primarily they are borrowing money from uh, any source or receiving money from investors. So, that comes in equity, borrowing comes as debt and then uh, there might be uh, some repayment of loan or uh, may be uh, participation may be uh, you know infusion of new equity by the founders themselves. So, anything that is related to fund raising is financing activities, anything related to procurement or or dispose, disposal of fixed asset if, even there may be some occasion when you dispose of uh, used fixed assets and you get uh, receive money. So, it is not always cash outflow cash inflows also happen operating is the core activities. Uh, why these three kinds of separate uh, activities? Because uh, uh, as a founder you may, you may find it not so much useful, but if you, if you get into deeper inside, you will insight to some other, uh, other balance sheet profit loss account and their cash flow statement, you will find that they are highly revealing. Like suppose a banker is looking into their cash flow statement, they will be looking whether uh, the company has utilized short term money for procuring long term asset or long term money for managing working capital that is short term requirement that is an alarming situation. At any point of time when they just identify that, they immediately uh, start thinking that this company is not doing well, something is amiss about this company. Why are they not capable of meeting the requirement of a particular activities out of the similar kind of money and they are resorting to money that is meant for another kind of activity. Suppose, money meant for purchase of raw material is used for procuring an asset, a fixed asset, then in the moving forward, immediately moving forward, the company will find going very difficult because they would not be able to manage their working capital requirement. They would not be able to manage raw material, they would not be able to manage to pay salary. So, this is a kind of an alarm and that happens to start off as well. When they when things go haywire, then they will try to cut corners, they will try to juggle between different activities and then pay make payments and you just if you have bit of an expertise of, uh, of analyzing uh, cash flow statements, you will immediately identify that this company is entering into some kind of a of a trap and they will not be able to come out of it unless they take precaution at this particular moment. So, that is why cash flow actually is highly revealing. So, uh, so learn uh, thoroughly the cash flow statements. Founders should be particularly interested because uh, many companies run out of cash at some point of time and uh, uh, this can actually be be preempted meaning you can understand is means you can predict when you are going to be cash negative and becoming cash negative is the death nail almost like uh, uh, like a coffin prepared for future course of action so you should be ready with some kind of arrangement that so and so date 
I am cash 0 and I must arrange money to move forward otherwise I am going to be cash negative just it should be avoided. I discovered that ministry of company affairs has a wonderful website on uh, all these financial statements particularly cash flow this is the link given at the top uh, it is a wonderful document in, in fact if you read that I think you will be thoroughly educated on cash flow statement. So, this definition has been taken from their website what is cash equivalent, but I think cash equivalent also are there are other items as well Maybe I need to explain, but what they say is cash equivalents are short term highly liquid investment that are readily convertible into known amount of cash meaning uh, they are not speculative. Uh, like uh, today value is something tomorrow value may go down or up something like that. suppose you have a debt instrument. So, cash it will be converted into cash you know the face value you know the interest rate. So, you uh, with fairly with fair accuracy you can estimate what is going to be the total value that they refer as cash equivalent. For an investment to qualify as a cash equivalent it must, must be readily convertible to a known amount of cash that is what uh, the definition also is. Therefore, an investment normally qualifies as a cash equivalent only when it has a short maturity otherwise there is all uncertainty involved maybe 3 months or less than 3 months should be a fair benchmark. Now, there are two methods of estimating cash flow statement both lead to the same data same net cash amount same oper cash flow from operating activities cash flow from investment and cash flow from financing activities, but then the method of estimation is different one is direct method another is indirect method. In direct method they, they in, uh, take into account all the kinds of incomes and all the kinds of expenses and then make a net of that. So, they do not consider depreciation in their estimate because they do not consider depreciation as an expense in that it is inbuilt. The other method is indirect method where you start with net profit you do not go into all the expenses like raw material like salary like uh, wages you do not include all of them into calculation because they are already done in, in uh, profit loss account. So, I prefer the indirect method that is why I did not you know load you with direct method as well it is it is not necessary because it lead means the both uh, of them lead to the same data. So, why unnecessarily after you prepare profit loss account statement there is no need to do it again. So, you start with net profit. Now, when you you must remember that while estimating net profit you have deducted depreciation as a cost depreciation as a cost was deducted depreciation for furniture was 150 rupees depreciation for um, billing machine was 1000 rupees. So, 1150 rupees of depreciation was allowed. Now, when you procure those machine, machine as well as the furniture during the period when you procured them they featured in your cash flow statement. So, now they are already included in your cash flow statement. Now, when you allow depreciation nothing actually goes out of the company through the door. So, that money remains with you is just a book entry meaning depreciation is a book entry no cash goes outside the company. It is an expense just to apportion just to keep an account that I am apportioning a part of the cost of my machinery and furniture. So, that uh, when I estimate the net profit I apportion that as an expense. So, my net profit becomes reduced by that amount. So, I pay less amount of tax we will discuss that later, but that is the philosophy. So, because no cash has gone out, but we have deducted that from sales. So, now we add it back because that cash is with us it is it is there with us. So, we remain would retain that. So, net profit now we make the adjustment for non cash expenses. So, it is depreciation to add back depreciation then whatever is the maybe suppose you sell some fixed asset in some some year suppose you sell the chair for for example you bought it for uh, say furniture say billing machine billing machine cost us 1000 rupees 10000 rupees now after a year you realize you don't need this billing billing machine you have a computer and a printer you can do everything in a computer so you went and sold the machine in the market so now you might sell it 
slightly higher price than its book value or lower price than its book value. So, if you gain something that is a gain. So, you that gain is deducted because you have allowed at the beginning the full value of the machine and then the depreciation. Then if you gain something that becomes excess. So, you deduct that a any gain out of sale of fixed asset is deducted any losses is added. Then any increase in current asset is deducted any decrease in current asset is added. Why so? Because this is application of money. Suppose your current asset has gone up. So, if the current asset has gone up, it has consumed some money. So, money has cash has gone out. So, that is why it is deducted. It has taken away some cash. If it has gone down, that means some cash has come in because you have sold it off. So, cash has ca cash has come in. It does not come directly, it comes to indirectly, but then this is how if you calculate, then there will be no mistake. That is why the convention. So, add decrease in current asset, sorry, uh, decrease in current asset uh, minus increase in current asset plus increase in current liability minus decrease in current liability, whatever is the total net value that is your cash flow from op operating activity. Cash flow from investment activities I have already uh, mentioned. So, if you make any kind of capital investment, capital expenditure, capital expenditure meaning uh, purchase of capital asset or sale of capital asset. Capital asset is a long term asset, fixed asset. So, you buy a machine, say billing machine is a capital asset and the money you invest is capital expenditure. So, and you make any kind of investment like say in uh, somebody else's equity equity, or say uh, uh, invest in fixed deposit or anything that is part of your uh, cash flow from investment activities. Then cash flow from financing activities, if you are borrowing money, say new borrowing money from bank, suppose you want to buy a new machine, whatever that is, suppose for 5 lakh rupees. So, you borrow 5 lakh rupees, immediately 5 lakh rupees of cash is coming in because bank, bank is giving you money. We are talking about cash, not asset liability, just cash. There is no one to one relation with assets liability and cash flow. Remember that, do not let your mind get confused with that. So, it is all cash coming in and going out, that is it. So, if you borrow money, meaning you are getting some cash. So, anything any additional borrowing that you are making is directly added. So, it is plus. If you are repaying any money against any debt that is deducted because you have sent cash to the bank or to anybody that has been deducted. You pay dividend to founders. So, cash is transferred. So, dividend is a cash minus cash negative. So, you deduct that as well. So, all these constitute the financing activity. Now, we let us see the, our own example as to how we have done this. See in this year, but this uh, 2017-18, normally it is financial year is referred to as 17-18, 18-19 something like that. So, this, act, this year is actually 2017-18. Now, we remember that we made a profit of and this is net profit not retained earning. Should remember this not retained earning, it is net profit. And, uh, net profit means after payment of tax. If you start with payment of tax, then tax is to be deducted from here. You can do anything any way that you want, but the data should be meaningful as much as it is here. So, the data there will, there will be no change in the data per se. So, net profit was 1,13,995. Then I said whatever is the non-tax expenses, sorry non-cash expenses that is to be added because money has not gone out. So, 1150 was the total depreciation, you add that minus increase in current asset. We, we noticed that our current asset was 0, opening stock was 0 or maybe whatever that is, it has gone up by 20,000 rupees. That means, our cash has been utilized to build up this additional current asset. That is why cash has gone out. So, minus increase in current asset plus increase in current liability. Why it is plus? Because somebody has given us material without taking money, meaning they will take money, he or she will take money later. So, as long as we have the goods, we can translate that into money by selling it 
So, this is another example of cash equivalent. So, somebody has given us goods, he did not give us any cash, but then that is equivalent cash because if I have to, if I had to pay him cash for purchase, then cash would have gone out, which we avoided by buying that on credit. So, that is why it is plus. So, any current liability is going up is plus. If it goes down, then it will be minus because we have to pay cash to bring it down. He, this somebody who has supplied goods accounts payable guys. Now, it is it, if it goes down meaning that we have paid cash to bring it down. So, there it will be minus because that is application of cash, cash is going out. So, all this together that is A plus B minus C plus D is cash flow from operating activities. Now, cash flow from investment activities, our example is very simplistic. So, there is not much of there are not much data. So, purchase of new fixed asset we bought a billing machine. So, whatever money we spend to buy that machine in entirety should be represented here and this is a cash application of cash. So, this is a negative for cash flow statement. So, I could have uh, made a subtotal of the cash flow from investment activities, but because there was just one entry, I did not make a subtotal. But if you make a subtotal, you should give a sign that means negative sign. So, cash flow from investment activity is purchase of a new fixed asset net is minus 10,000. Cash flow from financing activities decrease in loan because you have paid 2000 rupees to a friend. So, you have literally took out cash from wherever your bank account or from your cash box and gave, gave it to him. So, 2000 rupees cash went out. So, decrease means cash negative. So, this should be negative. Dividend payment is 50,000. Again, you have paid 50,000 rupees of cash to the founder to yourself. So, it is negative. So, 50,000 plus 2000 cash flow from financing activity is minus 52,000 rupees. I should have given it in a separate line minus 52,000 rupees is the cash flow from financing activity minus 10,000 from uh, investment activity plus 1,7145 is from operating activity. So, what is the net cash balance now? 1,7145 is the positive cash minus 10,000 minus 45,000 sorry minus uh, 52,000 uh, 52,000. So, it is 45,145 that is E minus F minus H just refer it from there that is why I have given some serial number. So, that you can connect easily. Now, this is your cash position of the year. Now, to understand what is the cash balance at the end of the year you have to add the cash that you carried forward from the previous year. In the previous balance sheet, you actually started the year, uh, sorry, closed the year in the previous year with a 500 rupees cash. So, this is to be added to the next current year's generation. Current year's cash generation is 45,145. You already had 500 at the beginning of the year. So, you add it to that. So, it becomes 45,645 rupees K plus L. So, this becomes the cash position in your balance sheet. So, this is taken means carried to the balance sheet. Next year, suppose your total cash flow, you estimate the total cash flow and you find that the net cash flow is plus 50,000. So, with that you will be adding this 45,645. So, 50,000 plus 45,645 will be 95,645 in the next year's cash balance. Let me go back to the balance sheet for a second and then we will show that this same 45,645 rupees is the balance sheet data. See the first data 45,645. So, that the data uh, we receive from cash flow statement. This is the balance in the cash flow statement. If this, if there is a trend that this year it is 45,000, next year it is say 20,000, next to next year you project a cash flow of maybe minus 1,000, it is a kind of an alarm bell for the company. 
then you should start thinking as to why this is going downward and are we are we sufficiently prepared to face the situation meaning that do we have a great cash flow after that meaning after it becomes negative in the next year it becomes positive 20,000, 25,000 is it like that. So, that uh, temporary uh, problem with cash flow will be sorted out immediately thereafter. So, if there is a clear plan there is no problem, but if there is no plan or if the plan does not pan out the way you propose then there is a problem. This is the process of estimating cash flow is not a big deal, but it is given in a in a tabular manner kind of estimate net profit adjust for non cash gains or expense losses like there may be uh, uh, non cash meaning depreciation it is not gain actually non cash expense it should be non cash expense precisely. Then estimate net cash inflow and outflow out of changes in current assets and current liability if the current asset goes up it should be deducted if the current asset goes down it should be added. Similarly, liabilities if the liabilities uh, goes up current liabilities goes up meaning there is a cash flow meaning it is positive uh, current liabilities going down is negative then uh, add subtract uh, uh, all of them depending on what is the increase decrease you get cash flow from operating activities then cash flow from investment activities no further discussion is necessary cash flow from financing activities that is changes in long term liabilities and equity. So, ultimately you add all of them to get, get cash balance for the year then you add that with the previous years closing cash balance to get uh, this years closing cash balance that goes to the balance sheet and that gives you all the idea about uh, the philosophy. So, that kinds of brings us to the early version of the financial statement. We will have a more complex version uh, I, I just wanted to walk you through the entire process. Now, we will take a slightly more elaborate example in the next session and then uh, we will start we will visit the entire process. Uh, to give you a fair idea. This is very important for entrepreneur and then uh, we will close the uh, close the uh, whole theme with uh, making projected financial statements. These are all about existing. Thank you very much.